Good evening, and welcome to the regular meeting of the Morro Bay Public Works Advisory Board for February 19th, 2020. All members of the uh, board are present, so we do have a, a quorum. I would like to introduce our two new members to the board, Doug Rogers and Mike Whitlock, and if they would like to... Um, introduce themselves to the public or say anything, go right ahead. We'll go with it. Start with Mike first. Um, my name is Mike Whitlock. I'm a relatively new um, resident of Morro Bay, June of last year. My wife and I both retired and moved here full time. And I retired as a, um, an engineer. And I guess I just couldn't stay away from it. So this is the way to stay involved. Thank you. Doug, would you like to uh, say howdy? You know how that thing works. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Hi, I'm, I'm Doug Rogers, and um, I've uh, lived in Morro Bay for a couple of years now, and I've had the thrill of going through this 60% build plan with Joe Mueller, which is so exciting about the WERF, and uh, looking forward to hearing more about that and whatever other issues we're going to be working on. So I hope to work all, with all of you. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Doug. Are there any other um, announcements by board members that would they would like to make? Um, I would like to mention that uh, everyone probably got in their water bill a notice of the uh, citywide yard sale that will be coming up in April, the first weekend of April, April 2nd to April 5th. That's a great time to take advantage of uh, reducing our solid waste stream. I would also hope that now that the uh, this one of the city committees, I think, that working with the chamber or the TBID um, has taken over the project of the citywide yard sale, that they would expand this to um, the September when the uh, garbage, you know, coordinate it with the garbage company on there that weekend. Because um, I know I see a lot of a lot of stuff that ends up at the curb that people could be doing with the second citywide yard sale. So I just want to suggest that. Next item, uh, the next uh, presenter is going to be our city council member, Jeff Heller. I'll let him come up to the podium and make his presentation. Thank you all. Thank you, uh, Chairman. Um, I've been tasked with doing this presentation. I was going to do a PowerPoint, but I really can't pat my head and rub my stomach at the same time, so I said turn off the PowerPoint. You all have hard copies here. Uh, welcome new members. Mike, thank you for stepping up and joining the, the committee. And Doug, thank you for coming over. Is this mic on? Yeah. It doesn't sound like the microphone is on. It doesn't sound like it's on. Can everybody hear me? <laughs> it is on? It's just quiet? Okay. Um, yeah, Doug, thank you for coming over to this advisory board after your service uh, on the water reclamation facility. Appreciate that very much. Uh, as a council member for a little more than a year, I am not an expert on uh, the Brown Act, Public uh, Records Act, or Political Reform Act, but I will do the best that I can. Thank you, Marlis, for this summary. Uh, I'll do the best I can to walk you through it, and many of you but it's the intent of this council and this city to involve people as much as possible in, in the activities of the local government. So it has a number of advisory boards. Uh, the intention, really the, the most important thing really is that this is a forum for public participation. And in terms of uh, your attendance tonight, I think we have some room to grow in terms of getting people to come to the meetings. Joe Muller has some good ideas we talk about. <laughs> metering any of your utilities might get some people to show up. What else you got, Joe? <laughs> 5G network and the and the waves that might be affecting your health. So, you know, let's try and do something this year to really fill the house and uh, have some fun. Uh, the other the other uh, important part of the intent besides community participation, which I think is so important, is to provide recommendations and alternatives. Uh, on projects and policies that fall, that fall in the umbrella of public works. 
uh, you know, as a retired construction manager, I love public works. I can talk about it all day long. Many of you have experience in public works uh, just by having served on this committee. So we encourage your comments and your ideas, your recommendations, your alternatives. It's probably uh, that plus the public participation really is the most important reason that, that you're sitting here. And I want to thank you in advance for, for putting in the time. A few more points. Now we have the advisory body's handbook and bylaws which have been handed out to you. It's 43 pages long. We do expect you to read it. Uh, Marlis McPherson uh, put together this summary PowerPoint which I'm just going to talk through today. Uh, but we do expect you to read that and the bylaws. If you have questions about anything in there, really the best source that I found uh, as a council member is to contact our city manager, Dana Swanson, who deals with everybody who has to operate under the Brown Act. She's always willing to answer questions, send her an email. Uh, don't ask me because I'm not really an expert, but Dana does know all about it. Um, we do ask that you uh, familiarize yourself with the three primary acts that are part of being on this advisory committee. The Brown Act, which was passed in 1953 by Ralph M. Brown. The Public Records Act, uh, which was passed in 1968 when Ronald Reagan was governor. And the Political Reform Act. And I'll talk about those three in a little more detail in a minute. We're also going to ask you, if you haven't already, is to file your Economic Interest Form 700, um, which is a, has to do with the Political Reform Act and designed to uh, uh, protect the public from conflicts of interests and so forth. Then, of course, we have legally required training due to various acts that have been passed by the state of California, which you will be contacted about if you haven't been already, and you can schedule those trainings at your convenience. Uh, one thing we're going to talk about at length probably is your city email address. Uh, I don't know if you have one yet, Mike. Have you gotten your address? Okay. So the key thing with the email address is to only do city business on that email address. Okay. Don't use your personal email for any, for any biz city business. Uh, and I'll talk about that a little bit in a couple of minutes here. Um, and, uh, and also, just a, a quick thing is, in general, don't ever push reply all. I did that for probably my first 10 months and was scolded over and over again. So the safest thing to do when you're using your city email, if you're going to reply, you reply to one person, and that's the person who originated the email. And just avoid, avoid, avoid the reply, <laughs> reply all button. Trust me, it's the best thing you can do. And then one of the last things I want to say is it's okay to enjoy yourselves. In fact, I hope you do enjoy yourself. Uh, I was talking with someone yesterday and they said they used to come to some of these meetings and there were cookies and coffee in the back. And I mean, there's no, there's no rules that say you can't enjoy yourself. You can't have refreshments. You can't have your friends sitting out there heckling you. No, you can't do that. But you can bring your friends and uh, make it fun. I don't want it to be uh, just drudgery for anybody. Okay, now into a little more detail with the PowerPoint. And as you're going through yeah. that PowerPoint, if you yes, could sir. reference what page you're on. I will do that. Thank, Thank you, you, Rick. I appreciate that. So I'm on page three right now. So the advisory uh, body work plan. So each advisory board or each advisory body or committee or whatever uh, the name is has to establish a work plan. So that, Rick, that's something I guess you, you have to start at your next meeting. Is that right? Is that when you will do that? Do you know? Or when does I, that I'm happen? Not, you know, Rob? I'm not sure what our time schedule is on okay. the establishment of that. Uh, typically, that's as we start the budget process. We develop the work plan and then those work plans get approved by city okay. council. Okay. So within the next meeting or so, we'll okay. be finalizing those work plans. Great. Okay. Let me ask, so, excuse me, I'm yeah, just yeah. curious, I mean, is there a work plan that we had before that is now becoming obsolete and we've got to change it or how does it work? I don't know, guys. Do we have anything? There must be some work plan you, Is the work plan carry forward, uh, Rob? Or? Yeah. 
Right. Is it a totally new one? So the work plan feeds into city council goals, and those right. that are top, adopted as goals are basically what become the uh, work plan items. Um, uh, major city goals are to improve and maintain city infrastructure and to move forward with the WERF project um, as related to public works, mm -hmm. in a nutshell. So there were some more details that uh, filled that in, but we can get you copies of that. Okay, uh, great. Yeah, be great. To so see. the prior work Thank plan you. is carried forward. Is that right? And you add to it, or um, that's our starting point, and then we add and remove as um, projects get completed or council has different priorities. Okay. Is that clear? No. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's see here. So. Yeah, so there's a two-year city goal, and the, the council has established the goals, one of which is, is outreach. So that's another, another way to thank you for doing this, because it's an important power, part of public outreach. Then there are different details on how the work plan has evolved and developed, and that will be happening in the next few meetings. I'm going on to page four, advisory body subcommittees. So... <clears throat> This is very clear the way that Marlis wrote this, really. It may be desirable for a majority of an advisory body to appoint a subcommittee consisting of less than a quorum. So a subcommittee could be any specific topic that needs further development, uh, but it has to be less than a quorum. And then that subcommittee can study that particular issue and then bring their findings or their comments back to the entire committee and say, this is... This is the research that we did. Uh, these are our findings, if you will, and present it. It's important, probably the most important thing, is that it not be a quorum, uh, that it have a defined purpose, uh, that it have parameters and a duration. So typically the way these work best is a very specific topic that you don't want to take time up talking, the whole, the whole group talking about, but it needs more research done. So you vote on that. You appoint uh, less than a quorum to it. They go and do their work and then bring that back. So since there's seven of you, uh, a subcommittee could be up to three people, but no, but no more. And then the last note here, uh, staff should be consulted before considering uh, the uh, creation of the subcommittee due to staff time. Obviously, it's very time consuming to have staff involved with our various advisory bodies. There's the cost associated with that to the, uh, to the city, to, to all of us. Uh, the number of meetings for the advisory committees have been reduced this year, partly because of that reason. So uh, it's, it's important that uh, these kinds of things obviously be talked about uh, with, with consent of staff. Going on to page five, which is a little more detail about staff relationship ships. Uh, staff prepares the agenda and reports, providing brief, brief background of the issue, alternatives, recommendations, and appropriate backup materials. If possible, in advance of the meeting, read all that. If you have questions for staff, it's better that you ask those questions before the meeting. Uh, if, particularly if it requires somewhat of a detailed response. That gives them time to assemble the information in response to your question. That doesn't mean you can't ask questions at this meeting that you haven't presented to staff beforehand, but it's a good idea if you want a thorough, uh, thorough answer to, to ask it in advance, and that way it gives staff time to prepare the kind of answer that will probably satisfy you. Uh, it does say here, requests for information should be channeled through the chairperson, be limited in scope. The, the main comment I have in, the, in my column in the side margin here is that as much as possible for seeking information, start with the website. There's an enormous amount of information there regarding public works. Uh, it's readily available. It requires no staff time for you to research it. So I would encourage you all to use the website thoroughly. And if you come to a roadblock and you really can't find the information you need, then, then contact staff. 
And the note at the bottom, requests only uh, should only impose a one-time work requirement, not require significant allocation of staff, one to two hours, et cetera, which is another reason to use that website. Staff time is very valuable. They are here to help, but uh, do as much work as you can on your own before the meeting. Uh, page six, more this advisory body city council relationship. And this is pretty important. I don't think people would make this kind of error, but you obviously as a, as a body or as individuals on this body, you can't speak for the council. Um, we can't even speak for ourselves. So it's definitely a challenge for advisory bodies to do that. Um, down near the bottom, I think the most important paragraph, uh, if an advisory body wants to make a recommendation to the council, a formal motion, second, discussion and vote should occur. And those actions are conveyed to the council in form of official advisory body minutes by email to the full council or to your council liaison. So there's a lot of discussion around this. I've heard from different members on different committees and boards about this. This is a fairly formal process, but it does need to be followed. So it's a motion, a second, discussion, and then a majority vote in order to get it passed up the org chart. Now, for those of you who don't have important, who have important issues and feel like you're not getting the votes or you still have some concerns, you can always talk to me. Uh, that's what a liaison is for, I think. There are other ways to communicate the questions you have or the information or your concerns to the council or senior staff people without getting the majority vote out of this body. But the best thing you can do is if you can get that vote here. But if not, please feel free to call me, text me. I'm happy to talk to you, any, any of you, at any time. The chair is the official spokesperson for the group. As we all know, going out of page seven, advisory body council relationship continued here. It's important if you come to a council meeting or any meeting that you uh, first acknowledge that you're not speaking for this advisory body, that you're speaking as an individual resident. The trick to this is you want to make sure that you don't have a majority of the body in the audience. So even though you may say you're speaking as a resident, if you have a quorum between yourself and the people sitting here, you should not be speaking on this, on this issue. Um, and that's the last part of that last sentence. The majority of the advisory body are present at the meeting. So that's unlikely to happen very often, but do you, does it, you understand that? Tori, I see you looking around. Yeah, do you have a question there, Tori? Any questions or about that? Doug? Who did? Dana. Oh, okay, yeah. Dana is definitely the guru, no, without doubt. <laughs> okay, okay. Got you sworn in. Any questions about that from anybody? Just remember the quorum is like the, you know, if there's a quorum anywhere you are, you can't talk about any business that this advisory board discusses. Okay. Uh, page eight, regular meeting frequency. The number of meetings have been reduced in order to save staff time and also hopefully to make the meetings that you do have more productive. Um, Looking down at the PWAB here, looking at nine meetings this year. And we do expect and hope that you will attend all nine. On page nine, they talk about meeting absences, which you know may happen from time to time. But generally, if you miss three consecutive regular meetings, or which would be three of the nine consecutively, or 25% of the regular meetings within a calendar year. So, I figured out the 25% is 2.25 meetings. So you don't want to miss 2.25 uh, meetings uh, if you can possibly avoid it. Um, you do need formal consent from the council if, if you're going to exceed these numbers. 
and uh, I don't know if anyone who's been thrown off an advisory board when it's come to the council, we're just so darn thankful that you're here putting in your time. We really appreciate it. But we do expect you to take this seriously because it does require staff time. We do want a commitment on your part, and I know you've committed already, but it is important that, except in very unusual circumstances, you attend every meeting. Assigned staff, that's these guys over here, they're taking roll call. They're like the teacher. They're checking the boxes. If you're here, you're not here. Going on to page 10, or did I do that already? No. So Robert's Rules of Order, or I think it's Rosenberg's Rule of Order, actually, but uh, it's pretty straightforward. It's the same way that council meetings and other um, official meetings in the city are run. Starts with a establish a quorum, call to order, moment of silence, pledge of allegiance, uh, committee member announcements, public comment, for items not on the agenda, consent calendar, business items, future items, and then notification of next meeting in German. So, so Rick, have you been following this prior? Or is this new? Is this new for this year for this body? I generally skip a couple items here or there. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, well, you're put on notice. <laughs> yeah, this is, this is pretty formal. Uh, but it's good training if you're on other bodies. I recommend you try and do it. It doesn't really take that long, but it's good training for anyone who wants to be on another public body some way, so I recommend it. Uh, page 11. City practices, presentation of the staff report, advisory member questions, public comments, Then you discuss, and then recommendations as needed. And you are advised to limit public comments to three minutes per speaker. Follow best practices of civil discourse. OK, on to page 12 and the various acts. City email we talked about. Public Records Act, also known as the PRA passed in 1968. And another reason to really be follow a city email is all communication documents that a city does is available to the public for the most part, with some exceptions. So your emails, invoices, meeting minutes, all that stuff is available to the public due to the Public Records Act. So it's, it's really important that you strictly follow that that rule. The Brown Act, most of you know about, you've probably heard about it a lot. 1953 is when that came forward. Basically, it's known as the Open Meeting Act. And what you hear about most frequently is talking about things that are not agendized. So if you have an agenda and you're going to talk about apples and bananas, and you do that, and then someone brings up pears and you start talking about pears, that's a violation of the Brown Act because it was not part of the printed agenda which was issued to the public, and there might be somebody out there who's really interested in pears, and they didn't know you'd be talking about pears. So that's a Brown Act violation. That's, that's one Brown Act violation. The other Brown Act violation has to do with the whole quorum issue, and, and more than a quorum talking about specific things behind closed doors. The, the goal, of course, is that all the public's business is done in public. That's what the Brown Act is all about. We'll go to the next page, 13, open meeting law. We talked about that. Political Reform Act, 1974, mainly has to do with conflict of interest and financing and ethics, and that's where you have to fill out Form 700 just to avoid any, any conflicts. For example, if you're on this board and they're talking about, uh, let's say you're on the, on the council and they're talking about short-term rentals and you own short-term rentals, that needs to be uh, basically in your Form 700, uh, and you would probably have to recuse yourself from any votes pertaining to short-term rentals because you own short-term rentals. So that's an example of how Form 700 uh, deals with conflicts of interest and ethics. So if you haven't filled that out, I'm sure you will be. Oh, here it says by April 1st or within, oh, okay. Then there's ethics training, which some of you have done, been notified, that's AB 1234, and then there's harassment 
prevention training. So all of this training is required. I find it very interesting, frankly. It doesn't take too long, and it's, it's uh, really interesting stuff, frankly. But you have to do all of that uh, at the beginning, <clears throat> the beginning here. So that's the PowerPoint. Obviously, there's 43 pages that we do want you to read. Um, just want to remind you the intention of this board is to create public participation. Any way you can do that is a good thing. And we do want you to provide recommendations and alternatives on projects and policies. Very, very important. And I insist that you all enjoy yourselves, whatever that, whatever mm -hmm. that takes. And I want to thank you all for stepping up and uh, volunteering your time to be on this advisory board. Um, if there are any questions I can answer, I'm happy to. Do members of the board have any questions? Uh, Doug? Uh, I, yes, I just, the four to three pages you're talking about, is that the city handbook? Yes. Oh, okay. The handbook, yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Wasn't sure. <clears throat> Sorry. Anything else? Any other? Tori, you have a question? Uh, well, just thank you for reviewing that. I, we, we've been following much of that. It was already. I hope um, so. So that's been good. <laughs> yeah. um, I'm just wondering about public participation. It's the, the hall is empty, but um, does anybody know what the uh, TV ratings are for our monthly program here? Any idea about that? Only My wife has given up charter because she got really bored. <laughs> Only anecdotally. Um, uh, if I go to Albertsons, uh, I get stopped by a few people and complimented on our performance. Yeah, uh, well, because I'm surprised anecdotally, I'll run into people who almost, you know, routinely will watch the, the, the meetings, this meeting and other meetings. So, uh, but it would be kind of good to know particularly the diehards out there who are doing that. Yeah, I don't know if AGP has a way of determining that or not. You, you Rob, but I, I'm, I'm always surprised when people say, I watched the meeting the other night. So, there, you know, there's a loyal following to, to the meetings, even if they're not sitting here. So, but I don't know. Any other questions by board members? No. Oh, yeah, Doug has another one. Okay, because we're, we're going to meet in a month after we're done with tonight's meeting, and I'm just wondering, when would we get this work plan thing? I mean, it'd be nice to just have a copy of it tonight so we can at least at least look at it. We can get that emailed out to the board members prior to um, the next meeting, and then we'll include it in the director's report okay. from here on out. Thank you. When you say that, that will be sent out, do you mean the uh, current one that we're working on? The, or the current one. The one that we'll yeah, be the council adopted okay. um, goals. So when we'll be building will be probably around April or May? Um, probably before then, because we need this needs to feed into uh, council and to, into the budget. So I would expect we'll be talking about it uh, uh, March and April. Okay. Okay, that's it. Feel free to reach out to me. Thank you all. All right, thank you, council member. Okay. Uh, next item on the agenda is public comment period. If there's any members of the public that would like to address board items that are, are not on the agenda, you may do so now. Seeing no one at the podium, we'll move on to the consent agenda. Um, we have the minutes of the uh, January 15th, 2020 Public Works Advisory Board. Are there any additions or corrections to the minutes? Seeing none, is there a motion to approve the minutes as presented? I, I move to approve the minutes as they are. I'll second. It's been moved and seconded to approve the minutes of January 20th. Um, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed say nay. Motion carries unanimously. Next item on the agenda is item B1, the director's report. I'll pass that on to our director. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, board members, um, 
the director's report is basically a um, summary of the operations that have occurred in the department. I um, want to start, we haven't uh, um, reminded folks of this in a while. Um, on the first page of the director's report, we have a couple of website links there. One is for um, the Notify Me, which you can sign up for various email lists on the city's website um, to get, uh, for example, um, this agenda. Uh, emailed to you should you desire that uh, among other things including council agenda planning commission um, city manager's report um, um, and other items uh, the other one is our service request module so um, if you have a favorite pothole out there in the city um, you can sign up um, go to the city service request um, log in there and fill out a um, service request. Um, that gets converted to a work order and goes out to our crews. Um, that really is probably the most expeditious way to get uh, um, things to um, folks that do um, the, um, the work in the city. Um, then we move on to um, kind of the printout, the uh, report from um, our um, um, online um, uh, work order system where we summarize um, the number of work orders um, and then we're highlighting a, a few things that took place out in the from consolidated maintenance um, did some vegetation removal um, for site distance um, and uh, relocated a couple of trees that were in the that vacant piece of property next to a 955 Shasta um, that we'll be uh, working on as a um, bocce ball um, court in the future. A couple of bocce ball courts and a greenhouse. Um, our consolidated maintenance crews have been uh, working to modify the Tidelands restrooms to have them uh, be more secure and protected from vandalism. Um, they've done some major road patching. Uh, water crew pretty much um, um, work as usual with a um, couple of uh, uh, major leak repairs um, on our collections crew. Oh, uh, before we get there, um, uh, we have uh, water conservation. Um, we still are conserving water compared to our um, um, base year, which is 2013. Um, that is illustrated on um, the packet 11 of 17, page 11 of 17. Uh, moving on to our wastewater collections crew. Um, we have pretty much routine operations, um, um, including, you know, uh, lateral repair, lateral inspections, um, and clearing um, root blockages. At the wastewater treatment plant, um, again, operations, um, normal operations um, that have taken place there. We have installed a, um, a second diesel tank to get ready for the um, impending PSPS emergencies so that uh, um, when PG&E um, uh, schedules a outage, perhaps next fire season, that we will be ready uh, with enough diesel to supply our equipment and backup generators um, there. So, um, moving on to on page uh, 15 of 17, we go through um, some of our capital projects. Um, um, our um, couple of our major capital projects, the Highway 1, um, one really no change in operations other than we now have a um, new contract with um, a GHD, who was formerly Omni Means Group, and uh, they'll be um, completing the pre-design work and the design work for that roundabout. We still have to figure out uh, how to fund the construction of it, but um, we need to keep that project moving forward as um, a former uh, Caltrans director once told me uh, deliver the design and typically the construction money will follow that. So um, keep the project moving forward. Um, our pavement management plan where we um, 
I do our annual um, pavement maintenance program. Um, we're updating that plan this year. Um, PEI, Pavement Engineering Incorporated, has completed the um, street assessment, the visual observations um, of all the street segments, and um, we're selecting streets to do some um, court testing or deflection testing um, to confirm um, um, PCI values. So um, early um, numbers indicate that um, we're probably going to drop about three um, PCI points from an average PCI citywide of, on a scale of 1 to 100 from 69 to 66 so um, that's telling us our our um, previous assessments and uh, the modeling results were fairly close um, we're looking uh, based on the results of um, um, this work to put out a um, um, pavement rehab project uh, this spring as you probably remember in the past years we um, we had put these out in late fall, um, thinking that we might get better prices by being the last. Um, um, while the prices may have been good, those projects stretched on forever because starting them in fall, it typically would start to rain and doing um, sealing operations and rain don't work well together. Um, we have a couple of projects from our One Water Plan that are um, out for RFP. Um, the Nutmeg pressure zone in, uh, improvements, including the replacement of the Nutmeg uh, water storage tank. We expect those uh, proposals back um, on the auspicious day of 02202020 um, at 2 p.m. So, um, and. And then um, we did receive three proposals on our um, wastewater collection system improvements. We're in the process of eval evaluating those proposals and we'll likely bring a couple of the firms in um, next week for interviews and then um, move on to there from uh, recommendations for award of contract. We have some smaller CIPs that we've been working on um, um, that um, have been giving us a little bit of fits. We had some improvements for, proposed for the North Point parking lot, um, adding some uh, parking lot lighting and um, a fencing project up there. Um, um, when those quotes came back, um, uh, we rejected those bids uh, as being uh, quite a bit over the engineer's estimate and exceeding the budget that we had available. The same with our boat rests off um, Pocket Park in the Tidelands Park. Um, that came in at about almost double um, the um, engineer's estimate and well over the grant that we have to install that. And we've um, broken that project up um, so that um, city crews can perform the demolition work and the landscaping work, but um, hiring out the the, flat, the concrete flat work uh, to be performed by contractors. So that's out, we're out getting quotes on that right now. Um, and then another a project in similar um, fashion where we didn't receive any um, bids on is our um, bocce ball greenhouse uh, project. We're about ready to kick that off. Uh, there will be a um, announcement uh, very soon uh, for a groundbreaking ceremony that we're teaming with um, um, a local um, faith-based organization and uh, they have a couple of contractors in their uh, congregation that uh, have volunteered to um, help us out with that project. So city crews will be doing um, um, rough grading, putting in the drainage system, and then um, our volunteer help will be um, placing pavers, um, uh, getting some forms up for pouring concrete and doing some of the, the finish work on that project. Um, a project that we need to get moving on is um, up on Sequoia Court. We had a um, um, one of our older uh, corrugated metal pipes uh, had a major um, hole um, 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 that uh, appeared in there, which caused a even larger hole in the pavement um, from the loss of the backfill around the pipe, uh, water flowing in there. 
and uh, we did the street repair, um, but we have one of our assistant engineers that is assessing that uh, uh, project for um, either um, probably a lining repair or replacement of that pipe. Um, you can, there's a link on the bottom of that page to send you to the city's operating capital budget if you want any details on the project, on the projects. Um, development and review projects, the first one on there is the um, power plant um, energy storage system, best project that the applicant has pulled um, from the city. They've decided to uh, rethink that project, so they've withdrawn their application on that project. Um, we have a um, hotel project on Atascadero Road. Um, um, <coughs> that is um, going through planning review um, right now. Um, we have a um, low-income housing project um, that is also on Atascadero Road that um, um, is in planning review. Um, um, the Harbor View Hotel project, which is at the bottom of Harbor, um, at about front, the Front Street parking lot, that's um, also in planning review. Um, Harbor Hut docks have finished construction, so those will come off the list next time. Um, the Roses Landing Upstairs Hotel um, is in plan check. They're doing some um, already permitted work there, getting ready for that hotel project. Um, Coast Guard Edition is in plan check, getting ready to probably kick off um, later this spring um, with an um, addition um, onto the side of the building to improve their berthing conditions um, there. Moro Bay Landing, um, the interesting uh, heavy timber framed building down on the Embarcadero is finished, so that'll come off the list. Um, three Stacks and a Rock um, a Brewery moving to the um, former aquarium building that's in plan check. And then we have a variety of um, residential projects in the queue and issued 15 um, encroachment permits in um, January. Um, on t the WERF project, um, um, the first sentence there, I must have been in interrupted um, before I completed that sentence um, there, it's apparent, but they're available on the city's web, on the, the project website. Um, so we have both 60% um, uh, uh, sets of plan for both the conveyance system and um, the um, WERF facility itself for uh, anybody that wants to take a look at those. Rather large downloads, so um, um, if you don't have a very fast connection, be patient. Um, it might take a while. Um, council adopted um, the resolutions of necessity um, to pursue eminent domain or condemnation of the easements necessary to construct the conveyance system through the Vista Energy and the PG&E property. Um, and we'll be working with the city's attorney's office to um, complete those actions. <coughs> Excuse me. Just gonna flip that over to let that drain. <laughs> um, and WERF continues based on council direction. And as I stated before, more information on the WERF. Um, including um, a variety of studies and plans is available on the project um, website, which is www.morobaywerf.com. And also um, the city's website um, is, uh, the URL is listed there, um, www.morobayca.gov. That completes my summary. Um, we're here to answer any questions that you might Thank have. You. Thank you, Rob. Uh, at this time, what we'll do is each individual board member will have an opportunity to ask staff questions about the uh, director's report. And I'll start with, um, on my left, with Jan and go down the line, if you have any questions. On <clears throat> I do. page nine, water operations. Um, Halfway down the list, it says located and marked 118 underground service alerts. Are these, what are these? Are these places that are going to have imminent problems? And is this an unusually large number? 
Now, these are just your, your USAs for construction. So when you call, anytime you dig underground, oh. uh, you call 411 and, uh, and come out and okay. we'll mark where our utilities are. Okay, I understand that now. I was thinking that they were places that the pipes were ready to break or something. <laughs> okay, thank you, Joe. Then on the, on the uh, page 11, the annual water conservation percent. I get confused every time I read this. Is this like when it says uh, January minus 21% compared to 2013? Is that we're using 21% less water, or are we saving 21% less? We're using 21.5% less water than compared to 2013. So that's good. Mm -hmm. Okay. I just always get confused on that. Thank you. Then... um, on page 12, performed lift station maintenance. Lift station number two removed and deragged. What is that? That uh, we actually physically remove the pump from inside the wet well and pull out rags. Uh, it's amazing what people flush down oh. their uh, their sewer drains. So uh, <laughs> they get tangled around in the impellers of the pumps, and we have to actually re- uh, physically remove them. Jeez. Oh wow! Okay. Thank you. And on the pavement management, Rob, uh, I know it's work to be performed in the spring of 2020, but you know there, there's a big pothole across the street up by the buoy on Main Street, and as I drive over it two or three times a day, I'm thinking, should I call this in, or is this part of the pavement plan and you're very much aware of it? It's on Main Street up by up near just north of San Jacinto by the buoy rest. Main Street north of San Jacinto. It'll be on our uh, work order list uh, um, so very no, soon now. So nobody if it's is not call, there. Nobody is called. Oh, well, maybe it's called in. It, this. Oh, it's it, uh, Mike reminded me that that's in Caltrans's right of way. Oh. Um, Caltrans also has a, a um, electronic. Uh, uh, maintenance report. Um, I'll the next director's report. I'll make sure we get that link in there. Um, but we can also um, file a maintenance request on that. So Main Street is in Caltrans right away, or is it just because it's near the intersection there? It's because it's near the intersection with um, um, High, Highway One. They they have their right away typically goes back at those intersections. Um, um, anywhere from 100, 50, 100 feet uh, back from that intersection where they control. So they have um, under their control the signal um, locations. Those signals have loops in oh, the uh, okay. pavement to detect uh, vehicles there. Those are under their maintenance um, responsibility. The striping there is um, Caltrans' responsibility. So um, we'll we'll make sure that we put that link in the next director's report. But we can, in the meantime, um, make sure that uh, that's been filed with Caltrans. Okay, thank you. And then it says also you're going to reevaluate the cost benefit of asphalt pavement overlay. Is that the slush that you put down? It's called slush. So. Um, Typically, the last few years, we've only done ceiling operations. Um, uh, Working with PEI, they've had a lot of success with um, getting good bid prices on thin overlay projects, so doing more of a paving operation using actual um, asphalt with smaller rock um, in the asphalt that uh, they're getting competitive uh, prices when weighed against like a a triple layer ceiling um, application, and they're getting longer life with that, excuse me, with that technique. So we'll be uh, evaluating that. Now the same company that would bid a ceiling project would likely not bid a paving project, so we have to break those up into likely two bid packages. Um, Some agencies alternate years when they do their paving versus ceiling operations and split up that, but um, as I've mentioned before, um, uh, we can only get so far um, with keeping our pavement um, um, viable just by sealing it. Um, At some point in time, we're going to have to reconstruct, or um, as you may recall, my 
my story of how the roads were constructed in North Mobile Bay actually construct some of those roads as actual roads right. at some point in time. Okay, <laughs> thank you. And then, um, this, on, this, on the uh, engineering and development renewal, uh, there are 50 projects in various stages of review of the residential remodels and construction. By any chance, are any of those uh, granny units or you know, ex extra living Un places? Undoubtedly, there there eight, there's some ADUs um, in there. Um, so um, that seems to be a popular um, 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 addition, um, forgive the pun. Um, uh, ADU is an accessory dwelling unit that uh, I the state of California has relaxed the regulations on um, developing those. So um, they are becoming more and more popular to, to build. Okay. I was thinking of another question, but it's not really related to that. Okay. I mean, it is, but it isn't, but it's not on this. I was just, well, I might as well say it. The parking doesn't seem to be, parking places are not being provided, though. Um, that seems to be not really an issue. Based on state to... regulations, ADUs have no impact on parking. <laughs> okay. <Based>. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Mike, do you have any questions? Uh, just very quickly. I'm not sure I heard a list of the street um, projects that you have for this year contract projects? Um, we haven't established the list yet, so as um, PEI completes their evaluation work, we'll be reestablishing that list. So um, likely April's meeting, we would bring that to the Public Works Advisory Board that would have um, uh, the immediate work that we're going to be doing and that likely planned out for five years. We can stretch that estimate beyond five years, but you know the accuracy of that model um, is not that great once you really get beyond five years. Okay, Chris, do you have any questions? Uh, yeah, just a couple small ones. Uh, first, I really like the consolidated uh, maintenance service requests. It's a nice stats and dashboard and, and great stats for, for trending. So one question on uh, page 11. I know that the base year that we did on the, the, the water consumption was 2013. I just didn't know if we're keeping a, a look at the year over year to see if, if, if we're trending, if there's some erosion to the consumption that, that might keep uh, you know, the rebate programs uh, invigorated or if it might change some of the uh, new permit fees coming in if we, if we begin to see a little creep in that. I, I do track it um, every year and compare the year before usually. Um, I, can, I can report that on there as well if you want. Um, but it's, it's been kind of steady for the last couple of years. Uh, it's, it's just a big difference from 2013. Yeah, cool. On page 9, it said there was a change from ammonia hydroxide to the ammonia sulfate. And so um, I was just wondering what the change was there and if the ammonia sulfate is also going to be what you're projected to use in the, in the, in the new project. Yeah, we, we definitely will use it in the new project, and the, uh, the emphasis of the change really was a safer, just a safer chem chemical. It provides the same purpose, but the ammonia sulfate is pretty much a benign type of chemical. Uh, looking at the material safety d sheet, uh, you know, it doesn't require gloves, respirators, where the ammonia hydroxide does. Uh, we still use those safety precautions because we're used to them and just as, a, as, a, as an extra set, but uh, definitely a much safer uh, chemical that actually was brought to our attention by one of our neighboring communities that uh, was using it with very good success. And so with, with the change in the SDS sheets and everything, you didn't really you didn't have to go through any additional training or anything because you were no, because it's a, it, it definitely is a, a much safer chemical that's really not regulated by the SDS sheet. They still give you one, but uh, you know there's no personal protection uh, protective equipment actually even required. Okay, cool. Um, it said that on page 13 that uh, Tamara Anderson toured, and I didn't know how that just went overall. Was there any recommendations from it, or was she just there as kind of a, you know, a silent uh, meet and greet and, and learning? 
Yeah, she's uh, our new area engineer from the regional board. Uh, she just her initial visit to the site, uh, kind of get, getting familiar with uh, the new project and also the old project, mm -hmm. uh, the old treatment plant of exactly what's uh, what's there and uh, potential challenges that we'll have for the next two years while we transition to the new one. Okay. So it was really just to get her up to speed. It was a, a, a great initial first meeting and nice. really just uh, extending the hand and saying, hey, we're here to help help you, uh, City, continue the progress along. So it went really well. Okay, great. Just one final uh, question, which kind of goes along with uh, Council Member Heller's presentation, but I noticed, uh, you know, at least could have been a glitch, but I got four emails from the same person, you know, over the delinquent water bill flyers. And so um, I guess one of the questions is, is sometimes we get... Uh, you know, citizens, concerned citizens that are emailing this, this board as well as m maybe some others in the city. And, uh, you know, I don't see any replies to that concerned citizen. And so, um, obviously, we didn't reply or take it upon ourselves to, to, to act on behalf of, of the board. But um, who, in fact, is following up with that concerned citizen and trying to get them the information they need? Is that being forwarded over to Dana? Is it being forwarded to uh, your city attorney? Can I respond to that? Sure. That's a good question. You know, as a council member, obviously, I get a lot of those emails, too. So uh, if you're not comfortable responding as an individual to that person, I forward them to the city manager. Okay, and, and you know, and then you can talk to the city manager about it, or you can forward them to Rob. Okay, I just hand that off to them. That way, you know that issue has been addressed by somebody in a in a position who can respond to it. Okay, does that make sense, Rob? Yeah. Can we put that on you if we need to? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Chris. Um, John, do you have any questions? Oh, I have a few. Okay. Um, one of the things which I was kind of familiarizing myself a little bit is what sort of information was available on the website regarding the WERF project and what sort of project management reports do you get and is it something you can share with the PWAB? So our program management team does a monthly report to city council that um, summarizes both budget and um, activities that occurred. Mm -hmm. So um, we can, you know, um, either put a link to that in our director's report or it's a fairly short report. We can attach that to the report. Okay. I'd like to see that stuff if we're going to be asked to look at them. Uh, and then the other thing I did was curious about, and you said you do have one, is you have a change order list where, or a register where you keep track of that sort of thing. And it would it be interesting any time that changes, you, and we're going to be reviewing change orders, is that the plan? Yes, once they're ready to, um, they've been um, vetted, fully vetted from staff's perspective, uh, we'll bring those change orders that we're, we would recommend, mm -hmm. um, um, ultimately council taking action on, first to this board and then to city council. So um, we're still working on a group of change orders that will be coming to um, PWAB in, in March. Okay, it'd be nice to have like just a list so we can see if these are the, the issues that brought up and then you can say which ones were denied or, or not going to be brought up before because somehow you got got around it but uh, it'd be nice to just have a list on a quarterly basis or whatever time time frame they usually get generated likely once we get through this list and issue the notice to proceed um, can't say this with 100% certainty, but being that it is a design build project, um, um, change orders will um, pretty much go down to zero through the construction process because um, any disagreements between the contractor and the engineer are on them because they are both um, um, the same entity. So, for example, if there's a question on a structural element, the design, the contractor doesn't believe it's adequate, um, 
they are also the engineer, so they are, they'll need to resolve that internally. Uh, most of the change orders that um, we're working on now have been, <coughs> excuse me, generated uh, by us in review of the plan sets and making um, changes that make operations both easier and more cost effective. Okay. Um, when I used to manage cost or design build type things and is this a fixed price or is this going to be a cost reimbursement process? This is a um, cost not to exceed with a guaranteed maximum price. So they have to um, justify all of their costs and it's an open book process so we get to review um, their invoices. So uh, cost at completion is usually a, a number which takes some sort of approval by a public agency to change. Uh, you know, I was saying, agree. Yeah, we want, we want this work needs to be done, and then you can make adjustments to it. Is there a process for tracking as they add a scope to their, or that would that would be the change order process? We don't authorize any increases in scope without an approved change order. So right now, there's a um, guaranteed maximum price of. I don't remember the exact number, but somewhere in the magnitude of $63 million includes both design and construction. Um, to modify that cost, they need um, anything above, the city manager can approve anything up to $125,000, but that needs to be reported to council. Um, anything above $125,000 needs to be approved by council before they can proceed. Does Corolla can track a uh earn value on the project? Yes, but we haven't really started construction yet, so... Yeah, uh, no. <laughs> I understand. Yeah. Okay, um, let's see. So that was one thing. Let's go on the other. A uh, couple questions about uh, pothole sinkholes. So you still have seven items listed. Oh, you, you p completed seven pothole sinkholes. Is that correct, according to this? We service request completed. Mike's says, gonna, um, I, I assume you're looking at the consolidated maintenance uh, summary? Yeah. Yes, that's what the computer tells me we've completed. I couldn't tell you exactly where they were, looking at your, from the table tonight. Uh, I do without appreciate pulling up those the fact orders. that you did the dig out on Elm Street, because now I can walk late at night when with the poor street lighting and not worry about falling. Or tripping, so. Oh, you're welcome. That was, uh, it's actually <laughs> fun to do those ones that we get a lot of feedback on. <laughs> okay. Uh, I noticed in my peregrinations around the neighborhood that uh, green, uh, green leaf is beginning to, looks like some of the pavements heaved two or three inches since the last rainstorms. It, Greenwood. On Greenwood. Yeah, uh, there by a lane around 2,400 block, maybe 2,500 block. So, but it's hard to describe it, and I wasn't quite sure what to. I didn't take a picture or send in a request yet, but you may. But it's there's quite a strip of, of, of pavement base beginning to uh, do stuff, and I imagine by the the end of the rainy season, you'll probably have some, some heaving, which will gone up a couple more inches, based on what I'm seeing there. Yeah, I'm not sure ex what you're seeing exactly on Greenwood, but I can tell you I've probably seen it just like that somewhere else in town. There's, there's probably hundreds of locations similar. Um, yeah. Well, this, well, this week, and you mentioned, I just want to comment on the weather. The uh, That doesn't have as big a variable in production as it does on us on, on installation. We've been okay. trying to obtain asphalt all week long. Uh, the, the plants that we work with in Paso Robles and mm -hmm. uh, locally are not open. They're yeah, not well, producing asphalt. So we only ask for four tons at a time. Yeah. They won't even open unless they have 100 to 200 tons ordered. Yeah, and I, well, I and, understand and that. I would just... So, so would, yes, nice weather. We want to be out there doing more paving. Unfortunately, no, we can't no, right I'd, now for I'm, some further... I'm not saying that. I'm just... Yeah. I would, based on the, the the weather's effect on Greenwood, from this last wet weather we've had, it's... it's there's a noticeable uh, heaving going on. So there's... Looks like that, that street's going to need some additional attention. And I'll take pictures when I get a chance. Please, yeah, I'm going please to jump do. in, yeah. and I think I, I brought this up a year or so ago. 
um, right after that uh, Greenwood was paved. Um, they, this is at the corner of Elena and Greenwood. Just as you turn onto Greenwood, that stretch right there, um, it, uh, not long after it had been repaved, um, it started the first heavy truck, probably garbage trucks that went across it, sort of rippled it, and it has been deteriorating ever since. But I brought that up, you know, shortly after uh, the paving was done. Yep. And I have sent in photos. <laughs> and that was a, um, a sealing operation, probably not a paving operation that we had yeah. done there. They, um, had, they had pretty much cut out a, a section because that was special, special done. Okay. Okay. Um, anyway. Just um, we've, we've submitted claims to the contractor on a couple of those issues. And uh, um, um, a lot of times when we... There's existing water there. Another issue with getting these things, uh, the sealing operation when it's wet, it's uh, very hard to prove these warranty um, issues with the contractor. I um, just want to point out, um, maybe we could um, take questions on kind of the consolidated maintenance issues um, first. Um, uh, Mike has a, um, a transportation um, issue that he needs to uh, uh, resolve. So uh, if we can get Mike out of here as quickly as possible, uh, we'd appreciate that. Okay. Okay. Well, I can jump to, forward to the pavement management. Uh, oh, this uh, structural grading is going to be open graded or is it going to be, uh, you know, the overlay? What? So we haven't selected the um, um, our treatment plan yet. It's going to be once um, PEI finishes their evaluation. Likely, what they're suggesting is a um, um, thin asphalt overlay. So probably three eighths inch rock in conventional um, paving operation. Um, um, over the over the street versus um, it's price competitive to what we've done with the, tri the triple air uh, cape seal, but you get a better wearing surface out of it. Okay. Uh, so you, you said you're going to bring up the scope of work for the pavement management plan uh, in April, I think. Yes. Uh, how much after that do you plan on sending out the RFP? So we um, will go right to bid um, after that for our spring um, paving project. Um, we might even be out to bid when we take it, bring that to PWAB with the list of streets um, um, because we do want to get that, uh, be the first ones uh, to be paving if possible this year. Could you send us a draft list of the, the streets you're considering then? Yes. Okay. Does anyone else have some pavement questions? I would just say that I was happy with the service request that got filled uh, a couple months ago when I filed it on Hill, Hill Street in Mimosa. There was some potholes, and the system works really well. Yes, it does. I, I really like this consolidated maintenance report. It's great. I see there's one um, sign removal. So my question is, I don't know if the Wayfaring Sign Project is alive in the Public Works Department or if that's still waiting for city direction or what, but... It'd be nice to start putting some of those signs up. Um, the wayfinding sign is still um, not quite uh, complete yet, mm -hmm. so we haven't received the the actual signs yet. But once um, community development has uh, completed that work, um, we'll be installing those wayfinding signs. Community development, so it's so planning. Yeah, uh, basically. So is they're they're getting the signs. They're made. working with um, the chamber in uh, developing that and the local committees and developing those wayfinding um, locations. I believe it's gone planning commission a couple of times, so. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks. In the meantime, um, smartphone apps uh, uh, help us to get around too. So that'll find its way maybe onto the maintenance request yes. or install whatever the, like the public restroom obviously is an addition to this list here, right? Yeah, yeah. correct. Okay, great, great job, thank you. Okay, well, then I think I'm done with Mike if he wants to disappear on us. Mr. Chair, do you have any um, uh, questions on consolidated maintenance? Uh, no, except that uh, 
I really like the uh, the restroom shower down there. I took a look at that and walked through the restroom there and didn't even notice that uh, you know that that was a shower a door to the shower there. So it was very well very well done. Well, uh, thank you very much. If any of you have questions, please don't hesitate to email me. I want to get you a quick and, and correct response to anything that might come up after I leave right now. But thanks again. Thank you. Okay. Right. Okay. And thanks, Mike. So I have questions for Joe. Um, Actually, I'd, uh, before you ask that, I just need to make a question, uh, a correction. The number before you dig is 811. I had a slip of the tongue. It's not 411. So oh. anytime before you dig, <laughs> 811. Yeah, so I just wanted to make sure I, I put out the correct phone number out there before you dig. Before uh, you dig. So uh, we'll come out, mark the utilities, not only the city, but also uh, the gas company, the phone company, everybody will come out to make sure that you're not cutting into any public utilities. As I understand it, you'd really like to know if somebody's going to move their mailbox and they're going to dig a post hole. Yes. <laughs> um, so I had a question about your grease con source control inspections. Is it the same seven customers each month, or is there a, a rotation? There, there is a rotation. Uh, we have almost uh, 100 inspections that we do a year, so uh, we just uh, do an inspection uh, once a year to the businesses where we go and uh, inspect their grease trap. How often do you see something which needs to be addressed? Uh, there's a handful of, uh, of customers that uh, we have to remind them to get their grease trap pumped. Uh, I'd say the majority of uh, the businesses in Morro Bay are very good about uh, keeping in compliance and, and keeping very good records. So uh, uh, very small amount of return visits that we have to do. Okay. Uh, it says cleared sewer main line that partially blocked by roots on Main Street near San Jacinto. What trees? If I remember right, are you talking about the eucalyptus trees on the, the west side or is there some other source of trees for getting in the sewer. Yeah, it's, that line is actually relatively far away from a lot of tree source, so it probably would be the one, the eucalyptus on that far side, uh, but really it's not easily identifiable which trees are affecting it. So it just some random tree roots are getting into a, the sewer then? Yeah, and that, that we scheduled that uh, Main Street line to be root treated this year with a chemical to, uh, to uh, combat that growth. Okay, and I noticed that on page 10, I think Mike had listed uh, arc flash training, and then, no, it's you. And then you've got it listed again on page 14. What's arc flash training, and was it two sessions, or is it? No, uh, we, we did it for uh, the whole utility department. So uh, utilities uh, encompasses water, wastewater, and collections. And we did arc flash training. And arc flash training is essentially electrical training on the, uh, the circuit breakers and the buckets, so when you, when you trip it. OK. Um, let's see. What was the engine, uh, Rob? What was the engi engineer's estimate for uh, the uh, wastewater collection system improvement plan? Three proposals: uh, Beachcomber, Main Street, and Tascadero. What was your, what was your cost engineer's estimate for that for the collection system repairs? Um, Construction-wise, I don't remember what the construction costs were. Um, um, engineering fees are going to be about, um, in the neighborhood, about $300,000 um, for um, that work there. So you're talking in the neighborhood of? A couple million dollars in, um, $3 million-ish in. So, so uh, you know, I was ground into me that it's, you know, engineering cost is 6% plus surveying. Uh, so this is going to be more than 6% than? Um, perhaps likely, but as you know, uh, engineering fees are not uh, bid. Uh, yeah. They are 
um, yeah. qualifications based selection. Okay. Um, how'd you repair the pavement there at Sequoia? Did you just dig it out and fill it up again, or is it? Yeah, I, I, and you're going to go back in for the the, the storm drain, or did you yes? Cover? So we'll need to um, replace this. It's a corrugated metal pipe um, there that's was I believe eight mid eighties vintage. Um, um, it gets a lot of rock in that uh, pipe and doesn't have a good upstream rock catcher on it. So it gets a, the bottom gets abraded. Um, um, You're going to put a rock catcher maybe? Likely put a rock catcher on there. Um, likely it will be HTPE lined. Um, probably the most cost effective way to repair that. Okay. Uh, battery energy storage system. So that was withdrawn. Is it with prejudice, or are they thinking about coming back with it later when they figure out better what they want? I think they are um, trying to figure things out. Um, they didn't realize that um, um, that they were in a floodplain there, and they had to deal with um, either. Um, elevating the structures or flood proofing so they needed to that was one of the issues that they had with the project there mm -hmm. what's there is a big field up the hill a little bit which is 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 that a place where they might stick it in, put this thing in or is it they just don't know yet um, I think the location is probably set they need to be fairly close to the pg e substation um, and on that industrial property there, um, I would guess that they would refine their solutions to their floodplain issues. Um, uh, they had some building height issues um, there. Um, so um, I would guess that they're looking at perhaps rethinking the structure and uh, resubmitting. Okay. Uh, so there's going to be much visual impact for the the, the area there? Or um, their proposed location was right behind the existing power plant building. I think you'd have a difficult time seeing it. Okay. Um, let's see. How's, as a former federal employee doing stuff, how's the, how's, has the Coast Guard shared any funding status for their proposed addition? Or modification? Um, they need to spend their money as quickly as possible. So they've already been given it? So yes. They, so they have to get rid of it before, yeah. a, I think it's September is their, their, their drop dead date. I, I believe you're right. Okay. Uh, and then the, the, the little niggling question in my head there is on projects on on houses where they they expand by more than 50% you you do you collect some sort of fee for putting in curb and gutter when it's cost effective or do you make them do it in during the the permit construction process um if it's in an area that would require those frontage improvements um anything more than um um uh, curb gutter street trees typically if there's not any place it connects to we will record a deferral agreement against the pro property and require those um, improvements to be installed later mm -hmm. um, our city standards for curb and gutter allow this um, rolled um, I know. asphalt uh, I know. Uh, thank you for that <laughs> um, so typically that will be installed with the uh, construction our, our um, kind of our residential areas are um, um, what I would characterize is uh, more of a rural design standard than an urban design standard. Yeah. Um, let's see. And then do we have anything on the North, North Main Street where the curb and gutter is going to be installed anytime soon? Or are we just kind of waiting? Well, I know you've got Sonic. Sonic would probably require a curb and gutter for whatever they do there at, uh, at, at Task Fort, yeah, 41 and Main Street. But uh, if that Sonic ever, I mean, they keep extending their permits, but uh, yeah, I know. But so we've got that, and then 
there's a few places farther on down the road there where there's some redevelopment activity going on um, um, that we'll be installing um, curb and gutter along and sidewalk along Main Street. Uh, um, it depends what happens with that um, existing hotel, what level of improvements they make. They will likely be... Uh, yeah. which, which hotel? Um, the one right next to uh, the, the housing projects is just about completed there, near ben just north of Benita. Okay. Um, so they're looking at some remodel activities um, there that would require them to install. Um, now, there's curb and gutter there right now, if I remember. There's curb and gutter all the way from that the the, the storage storage place to uh, Avalon. Yes, but then you get north of Benita. There's some gaps in okay. um, the sidewalk along there. Yeah, and I know that El Rancho has got got nothing. So. Yes. Is that the hotel you're thinking about? Um, I'm not sure what their new name is there. Twin Bay. Twin, Twin Bay. Bay, yes. Okay. That's good Good to know. Yeah, it just, it's still, you know, it'd be nice if, if we had sidewalks commensurate with a, the street traffic you have there anyway. Okay. And then um, as we move forward with our pavement management plan, of course, anything that's really above a maintenance seal on an arterial or collector street will, will require us to do those, um, the city to incorporate those um, accessible features, so curb ramps, sidewalk, um, along with those projects, so. Okay, yeah, and, and I was thinking of that pothole you were talking about there in front of the uh, buoy or the old buoy. Uh, yeah, I just, you know, you might want to let the state know about the depth of the pothole so they, that uh, they'll adjust their uh, response to how deep <laughs> deep it actually is. Actually, I've had some good response on the, um, uh, rather than trying to find the person to call to uh, do a maintenance activity, if I put in a work order there. Um, they have a reporting process. Yeah, they have a crew out there rather quickly. Uh, yeah, it to, took about a month. When I reported some, there were some 18 inch deep potholes there at the dog beach. And, when I brought that to their attention, they had those things fixed within about six weeks, which was pretty good. Uh, considering their funding process, it's, <laughs> it's lightning speed. <laughs> Is that it, John? I think I'm done. Okay, Tori. Okay, just... Uh Two, two things. Really. One is just to reiterate for you, Damaris, uh, with, with Christian's point about it would be good to see trend information on the water conservation. Um, so just instead of just a percentage off of the baseline of 213, but see if there's uh, increasing or decreasing year to year or some kind of, some kind of second column of percentage points um, that would indicate what what sure. the trend okay. is. Or, or perhaps a graphic might be. Yeah, 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 well, a graphic too. If yeah. It's, yeah, yeah. Second thing is I, I, I was interested in the um, diesel, extra diesel t fuel tank, and it just kind of related to my question, general question is, um, is that a response to, uh, you know, obviously PG&E outages that are becoming the norm? Uh, but if there are other things as we start this year, and it looks like it's going to be a dry year, and the, we're starting to get a picture of what the, the weather climate picture is going to look like f for this year, are there other precautionary um, elements that the department takes or you know, thinks about or talks about in terms of protecting the, the infrastructure? Uh, and maybe this might be more of a you know, fire department kind of question, but uh, for fires, but um, you know, drought conditions and water supply uh, issues. Uh, are there any other kinds of um, precautionary measures that you that come to mind uh, when you start seeing what the the climate picture is going to be for the next twelve months or so? 
so our fire chief headed up a, um, a report for council on continuation of service, basically how we continue to operate in these extending extended power outages and council authorized some expenditures to maintain um, those services. Um, we'll also be going uh, mid-year for a budget adjustment to, for example, um, relocate the um, um, the servers for the city's computer system from City Hall to the fire station to um, which has backup generation and um, um, working with one of our local fiber providers to uh, make sure everything um, stays connected hopefully at a better price than we're paying charter right now for uh, for fiber um, 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 also, you know, uh, little things like uh, making sure that the vehicles are um, fueled at the end of the shift, uh, that you don't come back if you're called back to work to a truck with no gas in it or no diesel in it. Uh, um, luckily, um, uh, or unluckily, depending on your perspective and what you're trying to tow, uh, most of our equipment is gasoline um, powered. Um, uh, equipment, so we use very little diesel fuel in our in our fleet. Um, so for our heavy equipment is really the major use, and some of the newer utility vehicles are are diesel um, trucks now, so that we have you know more towing capabilities. Um, well, those diesel tanks that you expanded are those those are for generators on the running electric power for the this, the water system, aren't they? Uh, we can use those for both, so we can pump out of those into our uh, vehicles if need be, and we are establishing contracts with local, uh, the local fuel company to fill those um, um, tanks on an on-call uh, um, basis. We have some portable tanks that uh, we have access to um, that uh, through local contractors that they uh, will make available to us um, should that need arise also. Each one of our sewer lift stations has a uh, backup generator in place, um, ready to go um, at site. And then we have our water system, we have trailer mounted generators that we can uh, move to um, various sources, um, <coughs> um, installations that would need um, backup power at a given time. Most of our system, water system is gravity, so, um, um, that is rarely affected by um, power outage. Yes. Well, but you still need power to run pumps and machinery and stuff like that, right? So, yes. And how, how do you have an idea of how long you could withstand a power outage from PG&E using your backup generators? How long could it go? I mean, like how many days of running on generators? I guess it would be almost on indefinitely the, is fuel. It, it's all it's a fuel limitation. Yes. Yeah. And probably ultimately a dollar limitation. Yeah. Okay. That's that's all I have. All right. Thank you, Tori. Doug, do you have any questions on the uh, director's report? Yeah, I ran on I plan on diesel for a while, and so as long as they keep delivering, <laughs> you can keep operating. Um, I just wanted to. Uh, I might have missed hearing about the red-legged frog and the fish and wildlife, and I was just hoping you could comment on that because you were expecting an answer, I think, at the last meeting, and you thought... Yes, so um, 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 post-report um, publication, we did receive a draft biological opinion from U.S. Fish and Wildlife. It's nothing that we didn't expect, so we, we came up with um, the mitigation measures. They wrote those into their... Uh, draft opinion, you'll see a project that'll have a, a, a short concrete wall along one side of it that'll keep frogs from getting in there and then a, likely a slatted chain link fence or, and uh, a special gate to keep frogs um, from, if they get past the wall, um, um, from getting onto the site. Um. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, anyway, so that um, the draft biological opinion was issued. We're, we expect a final biological opinion um, uh, first week of next month um, from Fish and Wildlife. Um, EPA is the lead agency on this sure. NEPA, so they are reviewing that right now. 
Um, once the biological opinion is final, um, EPA can final NEPA, uh, the National Environmental Policy Act uh, document that they're um, uh, finishing. And uh, once NEPA is finalized, they can okay us to issue a notice to proceed and um, we will sign those loan documents um, on the project. So March. March is the latest date. Good. That's good. I ju just a, a comment. Rob said that some of the documents were download kind of slow. I. Uh, yeah, well, I, I, Joe made copies for me, actually. I mean, it was a big advantage. So I just, in case anybody's interested in the, you know, the piping or the plant layout, I have copies here. I could easily make copy for you. All right, thank you. Um, um, just uh, while we're on that subject, there is also um, a couple of co extra copies at the Public Works office if you want to come in and sit down and look at a hard copy of the 60% uh, design plans. Um, they're in the little conference room um, just um, as you come in the building. So we have a, um, uh, a conveyance system set and then a, the, the WERF site um, set that are available to peruse along with the online copies. Yeah, that was part of one of the questions I was going to ask is, since we're going to be doing um, review of change orders and various things with the, uh, the wharf, um, how much background information is available to us and when will it be available as to what's going to be on the agenda, our agenda, um, so that we have sufficient time outside of uh, Doug, um, since he's been on the wharf CAC, uh, you know, I'm not sure how much uh, material there we will have to be absorbing in such a short period of time from when the agenda comes out Friday to our meeting on Wednesdays. So, um, and how much, you know, how much information in for us to be able to make credible, uh, dis have dis credible discussion and make decisions on on these uh, items for the wharf. So each one of the um, proposed change orders will come with a, um, a detailed drawing sheet that will come along with it, the um, cost analysis, and then um, um, uh, basically a discussion in the staff report why this change is, is necessary. And we'll strive to where we have these major items, um, for example, this next March, um, we won't publish our report on Friday. We'll get that to you at least a couple days sooner um, so that you have as much time as possible to um, review that. So it'll come with a drawing and then a detailed cost estimate. And then in the staff report, we'll have a, um, an out or a, a breakdown of why this, the change was necessary. Okay. Thank you. Um, let's see. On page... Uh, let's see, nine. Uh, just a simple question. I noticed under the after hours response, uh, the 488 Whidbey Way was a leak at the meter, and then a little further down on the list, it also at 488 Whidbey Way was investigated and documented all water shutoff locations. I um, was just curious as to what that involved, and um, was that an, one a result of the other or what? Yes, uh, the Whidbey Way is a, it's a private complex, so it actually has like a, its own private water system inside of there. Uh, typically, we handle the water service and are, are responsible all the way up to the meter. Uh, at this complex, the meters are actually inside the complex next to the units itself. So as you can see in the, you might not be able to tell in that picture, but it's all with Schedule 40 PBC. It's really not our standard. So uh, when we were out there, I, I do got to give, uh, you know, Alex some, uh, some uh, recognition here. He's actually holding a water <laughs> valve on Friday night at about 7.30 at night, basically holding it on there uh, for the glue to dry as water spraying over his head in a cold evening for about a half an hour. But uh, that's really what we had to do. Uh, we didn't, because it's a private water system, a lot of the valves weren't marked, so we couldn't find the location. Uh, we went back uh, the next week and actually were able to locate them all. Uh, the valve 
in question here was actually underneath a truck tire, so uh, we weren't able to find it that evening, but uh, now we have it all very well mapped, so we were able to actually turn off that private system and let them deal with it. Uh, you know, in, in this particular situation, uh, since we couldn't turn it off, uh, a local plumber was out there, refused to work on the system. So we actually uh, went, and again, our staff went above and beyond and, and helped them actually isolate the valve at least on a, on a Friday night and get the water to stop flowing. All right, thank you. Um, this time, if there's any members of the public that would like to address the board on the director's report. They may do so now. Seeing none, we'll bring it back to the board. And thank you very much, Rob and staff, for uh, the uh, report. Are there any other last minute questions on the uh, director's report? Okay, seeing none. Um, uh, future agenda items. Um, Rob. Can you give us a direction as to, or an, a preview of what's coming so that pe we can be prepared? Probably the next two major items will be the um, proposed change orders um, on the work project itself. So there'll be probably a dozen or so individual changes that you, we will bring in a package to, to you to review. And then also in April, um, the pavement management plan and treatment uh, planned for the various uh, um, streets um, and uh, um, the planets, the draft plan itself uh, will be coming to you. Okay. Thank and then we'll have to um, schedule that work plan review um, also sometime in there. Okay. Um, prior to Excuse the meeting. Me. Prior uh, to the could meeting. you say that again? The draft street plan? I guess I'm not. So. Um, I don't know. For paving. Pavement management plan. So we in 2011, we the city did their first uh, pavement management plan, which was more of a holistic uh, uh, look at all the streets, their pavement condition, and um, which um, repair or pres pres preservation techniques would work on which streets. Um, we've, we're updating that plan right now um, with the assistance of PEI and we'll be bringing that plan forward to the Public Works Advisory Board. I see. Thank you. Okay. Um, let's see. When you com commented about the uh, proposed change orders uh, prior to the meeting, Doug had mentioned to me that he has about seven boxes of reference materials left over from the uh, Wharf CAC that if people are interested in taking a look at some of that before it gets thrown away um, or you know would like aspects of it um, to I guess ask him about it uh, I don't want to get into any um, Brown Act aspect of it <laughs> as far as you know different people asking him about the uh, the wharf project because um, how would you uh, suggest we might uh, deal with that, uh, Rob. Uh, any any suggestions? Um, so, um, last meeting we did a fairly comprehensive update uh, to bring the board up to speed of where the uh, the project um, is. Yeah. Um, also, the city's website is a great reference um, um, to read at least the. Um, executive summaries of those reports that are available um, so and that all, and all of those uh, meetings were uh, recorded just like this correct one. so they're all they're all on YouTube, on YouTube. Um, yeah. should you have a few spare hours to uh, um, to spend on that mm -hmm. all right um, uh, go ahead Doug it comes back to the time it takes to download stuff. A, I have you know hard copies of what would be Valerie's notes from 2012, and I, there is a flood. The floodplain plan is right there. It's kind of interesting. I happen to just stumble on it. It only took me a couple hours to go through the whole pile of it, and even though much of it is online, 
it, this is just hard copies, and so it's just nice reference to have if you care. And I, I have an index I just typed up of what's there, which I gave to, to Rick. And you're all welcome to take a copy if you'd like and have the stuff. You know, I don't need it. I just let right. people know I have it, and I don't want to dump it yet. Perhaps we on the next meeting we could uh, um, schedule some time as an agendized item to talk about this so that we we're not um, infringing on the borders okay. of the Brown Act uh, right. issues so that uh, um, um, the whole board can have a discussion about sure. no Rick has a copy of the index so it's like and I can give you a copy too so yeah. Sure. Um, I think a uh, member of the public has a question out there, our, our lead council person, liaison. Just an idea uh, that I want to throw out, since you are going to be looking at all this uh, WERF information at this point, I might suggest that the uh, approval of the previous batch of change orders was approved by the council, I think, in a November meeting, uh, and that's available on the website, and I can... Rick, if it's fine, I'll let you know where that link is and which item it is. Then maybe you can pull that up and send it to the to the rest of the group. And then the other thing I might suggest well, I, is I don't think I'll send it to the rest of okay, the group. Okay, well, then whoever sends it. <laughs> I, Rob, I can Rob make sure that that's available. You can send yeah. that. Yes. Uh, and then I, I think in maybe the last monthly report from Corolla would be good so that they get familiar with that format so that it doesn't just get all dumped on you at the last minute. So... I think that'll help get you up to speed, but I think it's a really important issue since you're going to be looking at the technical components right. of change orders and the project in general. The sooner you start looking at that information, the better. Does that make okay. sense, Rob? Uh, great suggestion. So, um, yeah. If you can do that. Perfect. And, uh, Thank I, you. I've been looking at it a long time, so you can always talk to me, too. So. Okay. Okay. So, so much for future agenda items. And... Prior to us adjourning, I just want to let you know that the good possibility I will not be at the next meeting in March, um, I'll be out of town. So, at so my co-chair will uh, my my vice chair gets a little um, notice here. With that, um, oh, let's see, you have a question? Yes. Oh, yes. Um, is your microphone on? Thank you. Uh, I happen to get a copy of this Public Works Association uh, magazine, which apparently Joe has a, a library of it in, the, in his office. And uh, there's a really interesting article in here, among others, about how the Public Works in Seattle is dealing with homeless issues because it's there are people on the front lines that are inspecting underneath the highways where you know looking for concrete failure and people are living there and so they actually have a five-year plan and I just thought it's something perhaps with your direction and the city councils we could at least begin to talk a little bit about what we as, a, be as doing a future as agenda a city item. because we yeah. know there's some people here who don't have a home yeah. And for sure, they're riding the buses, and I know I've heard that some of the drivers are saying, well, you know, we don't really like these people on our bus all day long. And so there's mild things happening, but we ought to at least put it on our agenda for maybe the next year and maybe help the city with a long-term plan. I don't know. So this is something when we do the um, building of the, uh, the work plan that goes to the city council for their approval, that's something that you can sort of add to your... That, that would be the perfect opportunity to bring that forward, too. Great. Okay. No other comments, then? Then we will adjourn to the uh, March 18th meeting. Thank you very much, everyone, for attending. <laughs>